for those of you who know football, we, we manage portfolios like we manage a football team. So if you are Jose Mourinho, uh, different opponents you play, different situations you face, you would adapt your tactics accordingly. Right? So for those of you who know football tactics, it's 3-5-2, 5-3-2, 4-4-2, 4-2-3-1, etc. Et and typically, the four is your defense, your four is your midfielders, and two is your strikers. Right? So in a normal scenario, I'll play 4-4-2. I'll expose my portfolio to 40%, income generating dividend growers, 40% into long-term secular growth stories like the internet space, for example. And the other 20% would be the strikers, the tactical positions that we take to try to generate the alphas to score the goals. But of course, given the environment that we're facing currently where there's been a shift in the, the undercurrents, uh, we have adjusted our portfolio to more reflect something a bit more unconven unconventional. So for a pure Asian equity fund, it will probably be now something like a two, five, three, where we have reduced or lightened up our exposure to the dividend names because we think there's still room for bond yields to rise or interest rates to rise and increase our exposure to the cyclicals, to the reflation trades and to the long-term growth stories. And this is something that we'll continuously do. Those of you who are may know us or are familiar with us, you know that we always say we are active, absolute return type fund managers, so we are not index or benchmark targets. Um, this is how we manage the portfolio. And in that sense, we are also diversifying the exposure because I think if there's another thing we should remember or take note of for 2017, is that it would be too risky to take extreme views. You don't want to be too exposed to growth, you don't want to be too exposed to value, you don't want to be too exposed to income. You want to have an appropriate plan and you can tweak your allocation to these various strategies um, and at the end of the year, I think you should be able to generate um, decent returns at decent levels of volatility and risk. So this is what our Asian equity portfolios are doing be it the small cap fund or the select Asia opportunity fund. We are, we have increased our exposure to reflation. So companies or sectors that benefit from reflation would include banks. Uh, in countries where rates are rising, banks, their margins tend to rise. Insurance companies, similarly, because of their investment book, as interest rates or yields rise, they're able to invest their premiums into higher yielding assets and that should translate to higher profits. Industrials, because some of these, besides demand, there's also been a lot of, uh, as I mentioned, supply reforms in countries such as China. And also the commodity space, as global growth picks up, uh, commodity prices should also be underpinned. The other area that we like, and this, this would serve as partially a diversification to to, hey, what if reflation doesn't happen? You know, if Trump's policies is a lot more diluted, then countries where there's a very strong domestic-oriented sector, countries like Indonesia, to a certain extent Thailand, India, which are more insulated than um, the export-oriented countries like Malaysia or Singapore, their sectors, their companies in these sectors should continue to, to fare well, driven by demographics, um, wage growth, urbanization, and all those themes that you are very familiar with. And consumer, you know, um, companies like Maruti Suzuki in India, car demand in India is going to continue to increase, and I think it's a multi-year story. Tourism, as people get older, they like to travel more, and the young generation these days also prefer to travel more than to buy a car or to, to buy, a, buy a house. That's what I'm told because I'm not old, nor am I young. <laughs> and infrastructure spending, as I shared earlier, um, governments around the world are realizing that monetary policy doesn't work, let's do fiscal pump, pump priming. And that's going to generate jobs. And at the end of the day, governments are made up of politicians. They will do whatever is necessary to make them get re elected. And this is an opportunity which we're keeping an eye out for. After Trump won the elections, the dividend yielding stocks, bonds got sold off. So REITs, 
exporters as well got sold down. And if this fear continues to push down prices, we believe there could be selective opportunities there if we find any mispricing or stocks or sectors in this area which are unjustifiably sold down.